In die verste hoekie gaan druk Daan Retief die gelijkmaker. En ons kaptein... En die eerste toets in die 63 Wallabies wordt gedrukt door een nieuweling uit Natal, een student. Het is die debiet van een klein kantman die begin van een groot loopbaan. Hij gaat een 25 toetsen voor Zuid-Afrika spelen. Hij gaat ook zijn land aanvoeren. Hij gaat op bij het tonentrap, want hij is onverschrokken uitgesproken. Dit waren hij glo, bij hij niet in zijn hart, niet maar lei op die tong. Tommy. Met respect gezegd, je hebt niet die traditionele bouw van een voorspeler gehad en een sprongbok trainee. Heb je dit besef en moest je je spel eigenlijk op een manier compenseren uh, voor die sprongbok stijl voorspelers? Wel, ik, ik heb het gewonnen of ik ooit een sprongbok patroon aangepast het. Want uh, die sprongbokken van Tukas het daar, het zal ik het toe wedstrijden gespeeld. Uh, in onze Natal was. Daarop ingesteld om uh, bij meer met die bal te harpen, bij meer uh, um, voordeel te winnen, met die bal liefst om te scoppen en om tien man rugby te spelen. En uh, ik denk bij van die springboxpannen was daarop toegerig en is misschien nog zo so op tien man spel. En toen ik eerst voor Zuid-Afrika gekiezen gekies was. Uh, was mijn gewicht 170 pond. Misschien een beetje minder, alhoewel die statistieken zeker ik had 183 geweest. Dus je toch gejokkeld, hè? Ja, maar wat kan zo so ook iets is ik nou gedoen het Precies, ja. en een tien man rugby speelpatroon. Ja, ja, ja. En dit was voor mij baie frustrerend. Dat was voor mij frustrerend de hele jaren. As Clarkson speeds Doug Hopwood, who puts in a clever run to drive over for a try. This won the wholehearted approval of the Twickenham crowd, which is noted for its sportsmanship. Oh, that good show! On the other line, Doug Hopwood picks up dummies and goes over for an unconverted try. Drie deur Doug Hobwood bij die palen naar het Tommy Bedford en Nelly Smit hanteer het. Getting the back into it, he'll do it. Good kick from Ben Youngs, there's a lot of pressure on him there. Two men coming through, Ashton through, but he's missed Vermeulen. And Vermeulen's going on there, beating two and showing great poise as well as his power. Better scrum from Bedford's Jenkamp. And it's a heel against the head. You're going to see quite a lot of that in the future, I think. Young South and Tom Pierce. Can he get it up to somebody? Farida a wonderful pass. Beautiful players. Jerome for Mullen. Let it go, Black. He's on the side. Lost. It's good work for France below. And stay. Cuts out for Smart Duplessis for Dwayne for Mullen. Brilliant finish. Well, look at the width here. It's the loopy pass from Mornay Stain, which gets to Dwayne Vermeulen. Outstanding break from the big loose forward. That's to Ireland. That's to England. The finish with that arousing win over Scotland. Come in with a bit of confidence to pre up what games as well, that trial game. South Africa. It's Francois Lowe this time, is it? Oh, he scored! Wales just seemed to stop. Dupreer again. Sniping round the corner. Great. From Ulan is the man. To dot down for the five points. It was on this shaft at East Rand Proprietary Mines where he furthered his business career. 
a totally dedicated rugby player and arguably the finest springbuck to have graced our fields and those abroad. His outer facade of strength was well known, but perhaps his inner emotions were lesser known to the people of this country. After the Murrayfield triumph of 44 0 he left the field in tears, as he was very often to do after Springbuck victories. He covered rugby fields with the speed of a whippet, and this in fact gave rise to his nickname. He was to be the man called Vintaunt. To say that Henny Miller was one of the greatest Springboks in history hardly does justice to a player who towered over his contemporaries during a period when South African rugby's world supremacy was all but taken for granted. They called him Vintaunt, the Whippet, and never was a nickname more apt. Well, Henny Miller and I played a lot of games together for the Transvaal, and we became very, very friendly. As a matter of fact, he's the one that shouted uh, over the phone when we got the first test was announced through the radio, he gave me the, the indication that we were in the team before it actually came through. Henny and I were very, very big mates. Um, rugby ability, he, in my opinion, looking right through the whole rugby from the times that I played, was possibly the greatest eighth man ever. And Hansi Brevis supports this opinion on Henny Muller. And I have, have never played with any other loose forward with the caliber of any Muller. Never. Dr. Donnie Craven remembers his exceptional speed. But when I became a selector, I had to look at him uh, analytically and critically. And I saw how fast he was. Because, you know, uh, at first the scrum half had to, to cover and to uh, stop a wing if he got the overlap. And uh, the scrum half was blamed if the, uh, the wing scored. Then the number eight took over from the scrum half. But no wing, no uh, three-quarter could go through and feel safe because any Muller would stop him. He had a wonderful uh, sense of uh, anticipation and uh, he also had a smothered tackle by which he grabbed the chap round the, the waist and prevented him passing, which was very effective, which you don't see much of today. South African rugby world was rocked by the death of the legendary Henny Muller. In action here in the first test match, South Africa versus the Wallabies in 1953. Muller, number in, Drukke Drie. Muller captained the 1951-52 tour of Great Britain. Here is a Naxias number 30. leads his team onto the field against England. The start marker from the Strombok span, Drukke Drie. Malo was hailed as a hero in rugby circles, especially after the Springboks' famous 44-0 victory over Scotland at Murrayfield, a tribute to one of South Africa's greatest sportsmen.